This this is AI Dungeon Crawlers. Today is Monday, July 25th, 2022, and welcome everybody to the dungeon. Where we five traverse the treacherous mind of a sinister AI, programmed with the insights of 10,000 authors, throwing burning hot thrusters at our every turn as we struggle to write the greatest space romance since Passengers, starring Chris Pratt and Jennifer Lawrence. It's a, it's a really low bar today. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank you to our Patreons, Twusk and Katarina. If you want to join us on Patreon and support the show, you can click the link down below. It really is the best way to support the show and guarantees we get most of the money, not Amazon or YouTube. That being said, we greatly appreciate any tips, bits, and subs. They don't go to waste. We have a few new shows in the works and we'd like to expand our presence. The easiest way to have that happen faster is with audience support. Every little bit helps. Good to see you guys. And now... This is the captain here calling over the love comms to my sensuous crew here aboard the love ship. Full steam ahead, we've got Eric Lehman. Hard to starboard, it's Noah Schaefer. Engaging the afterburners, it's Jerry Hall. And depolarizing the deflector dish, it's Gary Pearson. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, hello. What, what are you, <laughs> Gary, what is that? That's an award. It's oh, an award. Uh, wait. <laughs> what? Do we have an award-winning we have an writer? award-winning yeah. writer on this yeah. show? What? Yeah. That's something I bought for myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, never before has someone flexed on us immediately <laughs> upon the show beginning. Oh, you have not had Gary on before. Wow. No, no kidding. Wow. All right. I'm a bit thrown by this. I don't know how to react, <laughs> but... Um, Hello. Normally, I go down the list and ask everybody how their weekends were, but Gary, you've stolen attention, so I'm going to pass <laughs> it to you. Gary, oh, yes. welcome. <laughs> Tell That's us a bit about here. yourself. Oh, well, I'm a comedy writer performer, and I perform with Jerry Hall. And we do a show called Middle Raged, which is touring the world. Wow. That's what a wild ride. It is. I, uh, I actually bumped into Jerry. Um, we were at a fringe show oh, this is right before the pandemic i think you guys were going in to perform your show as we were coming out ah. from watching that one so the last you guys have been everywhere I saw you. that's crazy that is, isn't that incredible that's crazy. um and jerry tell me a bit about you uh yeah i uh i do this show called middle raged with this award-winning writer named gary pearson um <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, I, I've done some TV stuff and I've been a pretty lucky Canadian actor, but Middle Raged is the, the thing I am the most proud of and the thing I'm having the most fun doing. Don't tell my kids because I'm also a mom. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you guys tell us a little bit about Middle Raged? Yeah. Oh, well, it's a two person sketch comedy show that's kind of about what happens to you when you get a little bit older. You guys are too young understand okay. this but uh it's about the seventh time this has been said this <laughs> but yeah it's it's about you know getting older you've raised kids or raising kids or you take care of elderly parents hilarious stuff like that yeah. <laughs> sounds deeply relatable to me yes. my generation trying getting, to keep things sexy getting your children out of their diapers getting your aging parents into them um <laughs> our show goes to all of those places and uh, since a lot of the people watching probably are younger, uh, if you know uh, Second City style comedy or Saturday Night Live's format, our show is like that. It's a whole bunch of uh, rapid fire sketches and song parodies. And uh, we're not quite touring the world. I love Gary's oh, exaggeration. Aren't we? In the future, for sure. But we are working on a cross Canada tour and it's been an absolute delight. We're going to Newfoundland in just a 10 days, I think, to tour across the yes. island. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah, we'll be at the Oakville Center in Oakville, Ontario. On I know that place. September wow. 16th. And we'll be at the Westdale in Hamilton on September 10th, if anybody wants to go to those shows. I mean, that's that's practically the world as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it's pretty big. <laughs> All right, that's enough self-flagellation. Let's move enough. on now. Yeah, um, it really is. We're Eric... delighted to be here, though. Thanks yeah. for oh, having okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank God. I was worried. I wanted to check in, but I was too afraid to ask. Um, Eric, tell me a bit about you. <laughs> well, Jack, I enjoy long walks on the beach hmm. and gazing into the distant stars, much like the James Webb Telescope is doing right now for the first time, so cool. giving us back 
original telemetry. Have you seen the pictures? I see you have space in your background. Yes, of course I have space in the background. Why isn't, I it, love James space. Webb's, why isn't it a James <laughs> Webb telescope picture, Jack? I Because I, I screwed up. I didn't even think to look. I just Googled space desktop background. <laughs> Classy. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's you pretty amazing. You got some ratty old Hubble pictures. You must be so Oh, God. There's so many <laughs> fewer so pixels. So for you. Oh, man. No, it's absolutely incredible gazing yeah. out into space, seeing the beginning of time, a cluster of oxygen billions of light years away that could be the source that, of air that we breathe today. Who knows? It's amazing. Amazing. Oh, man. Anything else you want to mention, Eric, to do for the show, perhaps? For the show? Yeah. Do you want me to talk about the drinking game, Jack? Why, that would perhaps be the best thing to keep us... Okay, well, rolling. all right, today everybody in chat, as you know, we, we drink whenever the AI gives us something we can't use and we drink to forget. But I thought we would drink today every time in true good relationship fashion, you realize we just need some space. <laughs> much, much like the James Webb Telescope is aptly exploring. Um, we And yeah... And I thought as well we could we could drink every time that Noah hides a little uh, symbol of love in the in in the pictures today, little 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 uh, you know less than three, little uh, little hearts. Does this one on the start screen count? I don't know. It could, Jack. You're the boss. You're right. It does. Take a drink. All right, everybody. Hey, hey we everybody. did it. What? Already begun. <coughs> oh, wow, that pe peach juice. <laughs> yeah, Jack has <coughs> peach juice. <coughs> Went down the wrong pipe, if you know what I mean. <clears throat> Noah, tell me a bit about you. Oh, uh, I don't know how to follow up that. I don't know how to follow up any of this. This is why, this is why I draw, Jack, so that I don't have to talk about myself. All right, well said. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, do you want to tell us a little about the, uh, the world this week, and we'll just dive in? Yeah, so... Jerry and Gary, we asked, what are your favorite, um, what are your favorite genres? And we got space and romantic comedies. And I thought, well, what was one of the greatest romantic comedies of the 20th century? And I think that would have to be 1970s hit TV show, Love Boat. But what was the one thing in the entire universe that could have made Love Boat better? I don't know, Eric. It's, it's such a perfect show of 10 seasons and 250 episodes. You would think that. But if it were in space, Jack, oh, why, man. that would be uh, exceptional. So we're doing the hit spinoff Love Ship, uh, Love Boat 3025, yeah. where, where we're rocketing through space on a, a giant cruise liner, helping people find love, get away from their troubles, and maybe learn a little bit about life. We'll see how it goes. I love it. Shall we just go for it? Er yeah, Jerry, just... Gary, are you guys ready? Yeah. What happened? I, all right. All right. <laughs> Uh, let me play in. Oh, I'm the narrator. You're the narrator today, <laughs> Jack. We talked oh, about this. Sorry. <laughs> this is such a slick production. Yeah. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Just like the 1970s classic. It starts with man going, is this the script? <laughs> the love ship is full of attractive people and love is in the air. The people believe that love can be gained through endless traveling across the stars. They also believe that one day they will meet the person of their dreams. On the love ship, there are thousands of singles on board and it is easy to find love. There are many forms of dating available, including a traditional matchmaking computer system called, uh, controlled by a sensuous AI called, named Lovebot. You are Burl Elo, a human deck crew member on the Love Ship. You work in the Love Bar, one of the many bars on the Love Ship. You play happy card games with many passengers who are on the Love Ship to find love. Well written. One day, you work late in the bar, and Lovebot is having problems connecting to the Love Ship database and asks you to help her. This happens often and shouldn't be too much trouble to fix. You and Lovebot head to engineering and begin the process. As you reformat the Love Ship's database, the faces of the Love Ship's itinerary flash before you. One catches your eye. It is a woman with black hair named Julia. You find yourself drawn to Julia. 
She seems so sad. You find yourself wishing you could talk to her. As you leave engineering, you find yourself staring dreamily at the memory of Julia's beautiful face. Hey buddy, you okay? You're you're staring weird. Lovebot interrupts you and says, Sorry, I, I wanted to remind you about the love ship's next voyage. Are you ready? Yeah, sorry. Uh, you say. We're taking on 200 new passengers today. The love bar is ready. Great. Thanks, Burl. It seems we have another problem. A passenger named Julia has boarded the love ship without a reservation. Julia, what a rebel. Oh my god. W where is she? You're in luck. She's in the love bar. You rush to the love bar to find Julia and talk to her. <laughs> Just so sad. So sad. Oh, right. Sorry. I forgot that Julia is visibly upset at all times. Well, at, at least on her itinerary photo. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, sorry, I didn't account for the fact I'd have to change instruments and scroll at the same time. Oh, no. You weave in and out of the new passengers on your way back to the love bar. They are crowding the promenade, each with an excited face and full carry-on bag. As you hurry through them, a portly, middle-aged Flebulon woman grabs you on the shoulder and says... Who wants to be the Flebulon? Oh, excuse me, dear. Nice day, isn't it, Burl? <laughs> what brings you here alone today? <laughs> you say, smiling at her. I'm looking for a husband. <laughs> That is why I came on the love ship. Oh my. Is that your permanent address? I am divorced, and this <laughs> seems to be the perfect place for me. Plus, I am a good dancer. A woman nearby named Fiorina laughs and says, <laughs> Leave it to you, Burl, to make such a judgment about people you meet on this ship of our life. Can I buy you a drink? Why don't uh, you take... I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm confused on who's saying what. Yeah. Come on, AI. <laughs> yeah. Here. Um, I, feel like, I feel like we've lost or learned a lot about this Flebulon woman immediately. Woman. Yeah. You're like taking her luggage and it's got her address on it. You're like, oh, do you live on this planet? He's like, I'm divorced. Killed my last. I mean, he died tragically. <laughs> just looking for a new one. Can I suggest just so that the AI doesn't lose track of who's what and how, can we sip to haze the last two lines, Jack? Sure. A slight yeah. drink to forget. Uh, yeah, just a, just, a, just a little bit of a drink to forget. So I'm going to get rid of the um, thing. And I'm going to throw it to our, to our two guests, perhaps award-winning writer Gary oh. Pearson, to <laughs> say, um, who is this woman, uh, Fiorna? Who, who, who well, is wait she? a minute. I wasn't Fiorna, though. Okay. So you're the Flebulon woman, correct? I was you're the Flebulon. Fle you're the Fleb. All right, Jerry, who is... Fiorna. Fiorina, as Fiorina. it's pronounced oh. in her homeland, uh, <laughs> uh, is a single bikini model from Jupiter. Uh, and she's incredibly beautiful, but terribly lonely, and laughs and drinks to forget. How appropriate. <laughs> also, if you're a bikini model from Jupiter, I'd imagine that you're like, you're dense. <laughs> Uh, like Everyone else is stature. a gaseous blob, so I, I think she would amazing. have. She'd probably have incredibly firm breasts. <laughs> Thanks, Gary. <laughs> Good to have you on the show, award-winning writer Gary. <laughs> <Pearson>. <laughs> but in Gary's defense, if it's a space movie, she probably really does have incredibly firm breasts. <laughs> probably yeah. just like like buckets, straight Ugh. out, they unsupported. It's incredible. All right. Well, so Eric, <laughs> what do you want to do with this information about Fiorina? Um, um, let's say, um, well, correct me uh, if I'm wrong, but weren't you on your way to meet Julia? Yeah, we got to get out of this. This is our well, first, we gotta get out of here. You're first right. issue, right? We're being held up by this flabulon woman who, who wants us to, um, well, she stopped us. Yeah, she to stopped tell us. us that she wants a husband. Yeah, the um, Flebulon uh, woman and the bikini model. So yeah, there's I would two women there. That there's two separate women. So I imagine on a ship full of singles that every time our 
our hero tries to make it anywhere, he's probably bombarded by single women. I, yeah, I don't even have a name. I'm just a, I was just a flubby long woman. <laughs> oh yeah, wait, did we say what your name was? No. Oh, no, we sure didn't. There's two, but there are two people. You're there, right. There are two women now that this story has three women. Yes. Wow. And Burl. Good. Thanks for keeping track. This is really moving along quite well. <laughs> <laughs> is there any button that says warp speed anywhere on the show? <laughs> Can we get to know these people first? Um, oh, Lord. All right. Open question to the room. Um, right. I think we have a solution, right? So we have we have Fiorina. She, um, she's um, beautiful. She, she's a beautiful, lovely single single bikini model. Um, who else would know how to get men? Which is exactly what this Flebulon wo woman, you know, is looking for right now to find a husband. Right. Where would we ask Fiorina to take this Flebulon woman to find on the men ship? on the Ooh. ship? Uh, to to this uh, space volleyball court. <laughs> she can show off her. Hot Jupiterian bikini bod playing beach ball. You know, in defense of the AI, I will say this: that the yeah. love boat usually introduced a dozen characters at the top of the episode. Does it actually? Yeah. Absolutely does. You meet yeah. so many people that you don't know who the show is going to be about. <laughs> yeah. Cool, uh, cool. All right, we're on brand. We're doing yeah, great yeah. so far. So yeah. Is that guy from Germany still watching? <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, the last thing he says is, I wonder what the AI loves. I don't know in what context. <laughs> Red Gamer Soul recommends that uh, you take her to a dance class. That's also not a bad idea. Mm. A, like zero, a zero gravity dance class. Cool. <laughs> Dancing in the stars. I was about to do a zero gravity, um, uh, a zero gravity space volleyball uh, thing. Jack, how do you spell Rigel? As in Rigel 7. R I. G E L. While All you right. type that, I've got a. Uh, uh, so the chat here can enter characters and have them exist in the world. And King of Autumn ninety six in the chat here has introduced a character by the name of Garfax More Blue, who is a howler monkey humanoid alien from the planet All You Mend. I'm gonna put him in the AI here. See what the AI generates for this character, and we'll have him exist somewhere aboard the ship. Carfax. Oh, more blue. Oh. oh, right. And I'm right. also the narrator. You're also so the narrator. The story Jack. cannot yeah. continue Jack. without me. This is, uh, this is what happens too many when we hats. break the mold just a little bit. I'm sorry. Um, everything all falls right. apart. I would like to read this. Um, Garfax More Blue is a howler monkey humanoid alien from the planet Aldhumend who is dealing with a midlife crisis and is very intoxicated, not knowing that he's wearing a Komodo. Uh, his bottle has 15 shots of whiskey in it. All right. Well, what a party. He's in animal. the world. He's in the world, King of Autumn. All right. We've got more text. Okay. Let me come back to the text here. Fiorina, a single bikini model from Jupiter, chuckles at your plight with the Flebulon woman. <laughs> Fiorina, you say, why don't you show this lovely woman to the zero gravity space volleyball court? I heard the men's Olympic team from Rigel 7 are there now. I thank you, Burl. This will no doubt make her day, and of course, it couldn't hurt your chances of getting laid. <laughs> Fiorina, <laughs> my Christ. beautiful spin female partner, the ship is <laughs> ours too. Quite frankly, Burl, I find that less than sincere in the old fashioned way. Well, maybe one of the reasons being married to a woman is like riding a magic buzz farking weed that makes one into a kid again. Seriously, Burl, I want to play. Okay, just so you know, that is a gender mixed game. The two teams are both men and women. I think the AI has a little bit melted. <laughs> I wonder why I got cut out of the story. <laughs> the scene's about me, damn it. <laughs> Do you guys want to drink to forget and just hit the retry? All right, let's just hit the retry. <laughs> I think it's... What we know is Burl must find Julia, and he's got to get through yeah. this storm got to get women. through this conversation, yeah. Yeah, we, maybe the AI forgot about Julia entirely. Maybe that'll be the whole point of the story is actually, the whole story is, is uh, Burl's attempts to get across the ship to meet Julia. Oh! Speaking of which, Julia's in the next line of text. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, pick it up from, I heard the men's vo Olympic volleyball team. 
why don't you show this lovely woman to the zero G gravity or the zero gravity space volleyball court? I heard the men's Olympic team from Rigel Seven are there now. I'll give you an adapter sticker. I'll be back. Fiorina says. You give Fiorina your ship card and smile innocently as she walks away with her visitor. You return to the love bar and find Julia sitting there, sipping complimentary isolation blend coffee, looking somewhat blue. She seems upset, and you can tell something serious has happened. Just as you get seated, her name gets called out over the love ship intercom system. That's strange. The name Julia is par... That's a coincidence. I have a date with someone named Julia today. You call out loudly <laughs> to Julia. <laughs> well, you know, it's a, it's a move. It uh, sure is. You've certainly inserted yourself into this room. I wanted to mention that we are currently using the new Wyvern AI model, which is described as, uh, let's see here, um, best combination of speed and storytelling complexity, but it, it's prone to needing to retry a lot. It might get a little confused on some details, but okay, we could try it out. If we have to retry too much, we'll switch back to Dragon and, and see if it's any better. All right, I think um, we, we continue and say, is there anyone named Julia here? Oh, wow. Uh, Julia says... <laughs> Oh, hi, Burl. Well, tell your ex her husband is an outstanding dancer and has a wonderful sense of humor. President Barack Obama also likes him. Bold. Bye. After that, Julia seems really upset. <laughs> you want to find out what's wrong. You strike up a conversation. <laughs> Turns out Julia misses Jackie, the bartender of George's place. She was her favorite bartender and best friend of Jackie's late, late husband. Two husbands back. Jackie retrieves some information for you. Uh huh. Huh. I'm I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, uh, Dragon I'm, might be the way to go, right? Yeah, now. I'm gonna go I back so. and I'm gonna turn down <laughs> some of the random prompts, even I, though they weren't that. I'm high. no doctor, but I think the AI is having a stroke. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. I, yeah. Honestly, I've seen stroke commercials where people talk like this, and then you have to give them a baby aspirin and call nine one one. Noah, people are saying that the text seems to be frozen on the stream. I don't know if you want to refresh or something. Oh gosh. Jesse is still away, so Noah's running everything. I'm trying still. my best here, guys. Oh, there we go. All right. Hopefully that works. And if it happens where I have to refresh after every prompt, just tell me when there's a new prompt, everybody. <laughs> Sounds good. Ooh. All right. Well, this is cogent, at least. Julia looks up and says, My name's Julia. Who are you? I am Burl. I work at the Love Bar. I was passing by and heard your name over the intercom. I thought that was funny. Yes, it is. But my name is Julia. Now, tell me, why are you here? Ooh. Well, what do you think? Tell her we're here to make sure she has a good time on the ship, right? That's our job. That's our job, yeah. That makes sense. Also, wow, I didn't realize Julia was so cool. <laughs> She's got this uh, just like side, what do you call this? Undercut. Fabulous. Is that the Flebulon woman in the top left that there, That is Noah? the Flebulon. That would be the Flebulon wow. woman up in the top left, yes. <laughs> wow. I feel like I've seen that woman in the back of a Walmart before. <laughs> I just it, She looks familiar. Well, that's exactly... I mean, I feel like we've all seen a flubulon woman at some point in our life. <laughs> Something we could all agree on. <laughs> you say. I'm here to make sure you have a good time on your trip with us. Is there anything you need? Do we have text? I have text. Oh, no. Does everyone need to refresh? Are we getting? I'm, I'm here. Text? 
just oh, can't no, get Jerry. Jerry now. Uh-oh, we can't Jerry, see you're muted. We've lost Jerry, sound. Oh, no. Jerry, come back. Nothing's muted. Everything looks okay. I'm, yeah. I'm quite confused. This you guys think here. this is awful, but honestly, for me, it's a dream come true. <laughs> <laughs> there she is. There. Excellent. Hey. Yeah, welcome back. Hey. Just needed the power of you so much. You can't, you can't leave us to the hands of Gary. It's too dangerous. <laughs> no, and you see how a barb? I could hear you guys the whole time, and I have touched nothing. It's okay. <laughs> All right, you're back. We're taking it again. Yes. Okay. Julia uh -huh. says. Take this back. Julia says, no, I'm fine. Oh. Okay. Well, I will stop by later and check on you. Okay. Julia says, looking sad. <laughs> no, I gotta say, Julia's not looking sad enough in this image. You're right. You're right. I was thinking, I was worried about that same thing. Okay. All right. You leave Julia alone and head to the love bar, which is packed. There are many new passengers all looking for love. We forgot oh, that she's not supposed to be on this ship, didn't we? Yeah, oh, she's yeah. A, she's a stowaway. <laughs> she, she's a stowaway. She literally... Yeah, yeah. He, he might have asked her about that. Yeah. We're really <laughs> I'm here not... to make sure you're having a good time, and then we left. <laughs> That's definitely not why we're here. Should we uh, Should we go circle back real quick? I think the human intelligence failed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Gary. Exactly what Thanks happened. for pointing it out. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm here. <laughs> oh, that's why you're here. Yeah. Can um, we make him realize when he sees this packed bar and he's about to do the same job yeah. he's done every day that he has to go back and find out why that mystery woman's so sad? The impetus for wondering why she's sad is seeing a, a bar full of big people? Well, just that he's going back to a room full of singles, and it's either do my job and just be an everyman on this ship doing what I'm supposed to do, hmm. or turn around and be a star in my own show for once. Oh, oh, here it goes. Oh, that. That's good. That. I like that. Yeah. Well, actually, we, we need the Gary Pearson seal of approval. <laughs> hey, two thumbs. <laughs> Fantastic. That's how you know we're winning. Now... What has been established? Just that she's a stowaway? That's all we've heard so far? We know that she's a stowaway. She's and in the sad. itinerary, but she doesn't have like a... What, what was... What, what did we exactly say? Yeah. Um, um, she wasn't on the list. Yeah. She was on the itinerary, but not on the list. Uh, Without a reservation is what oh, they said. Oh, okay. All right. Without a reservation. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Oh, maybe that, that says, though, that if you don't have a reservation, we don't know why you're here. Maybe there's like a love a love ship. Like, oh, maybe the a, the uh, yeah the the love bot needs you to find out what her deal is so she can you know input all of her info into the computer and match her with somebody. My my theory is that she's a terrorist, but she's changed her mind and wants to find love. Okay. <laughs> so so she arrived with the intention of destroying the ship. Destroying the ship. Sure. But and that's and why once she's, she's there. there uh -huh. She sees that she could possibly have love on this ship. Okay. And she didn't see this beforehand, despite it being called the love ship. No, of course not. It wasn't until she was there and found that love was indeed in the air. Hmm. She believes she was which, like a lost cause. Have uh, Noah, have you hidden any like love imagery that we've missed? At this point, no, it hasn't been good. Okay, yet. don't worry. Is that is there any chance? I don't, wait. What are we looking at right now? I'm trying to understand what this is. Uh, not well. It's gonna be a uh, do you, if, do you want the me bar. Just, this is the love bar. Yeah, exactly. It's gonna be a is, bar full of people. I'm is just that doing the, the back of somebody's head here at the bottom of this frame? This would be. So how I'm seeing it uh -huh. is we're looking at like kind of just over the head of Burl. Burl, who I've okay. given a hat. Uh, uh, then in go, the shine, just to the left of Burl's hair there, or just to the left of the hat, the shine looks a bit like a heart. Is there any chance that's some hidden love? You just want a drink. I really do. Thanks, <laughs> yeah. Gary. All right. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> I did it. Drink Thank for you. love, everybody. Thank you. Thank God. 
<coughs> I did it again. <coughs> Jack, you really got to figure just, out that drinking thing. <laughs> it's challenging, man. We do this every to... week. I still haven't figured it out. Exactly. Gary, what are you drinking this evening? Uh, I'm drinking tap water. <laughs> the drink of champions. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Love that. Jerry, what about you? Red wine from a uh, box. Because nature's tap water. Because when you need water. it fast, go Fancy. find the spigot. Wow, Jesus, from a box? From a box. Is it... Uh... Oh, oh, I lost her again. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. She's in and out. I'm right here. Oh, good. Jerry's I'm always here. I'm not moving. I'm not touching anything. I'm here. <laughs> Surprisingly, Jerry was the one that we had the most difficulty getting set up this morning. So. Ridiculous. You're doing great. Thanks. Um, I see. Oh, sorry. I see some more text, so I'm going to oh, keep reading. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, my oh, God. Whoa. Jesus. Okay, we got a novel. <laughs> so here we go. Um, wait, how far back does it go? You leave Julia alone and head to the love bar. The love bar is packed. There are many new passengers all looking for love. You walk into the bar and get ready to do the same job you have to do every space cycle. But today, it seems so meaningless. More generic singles going about their generic lives and not a thought for you or your life. There has to be more than this. You double back to Julia. Today, you're going to find out what she's so sad about. Today, you will make a difference. You sit down with Julia and ask her about herself, what she seems to be up to, or what she has been up to. <laughs> Julia seems surprised that you have stopped to talk with her. She says, I guess I haven't had much time to meet new people. Hell, you, you look so oh, sad. Sorry. What happened? It's a long story. Let's just say I'm having trouble with someone. I don't think I'll find love here. I see. <laughs> it's a long, convoluted story. Let's just say it's it's someone I met. Okay. <laughs> Tell me. It's a long story. Let's just say it's someone I met. Who is it? God damn it. All right. All right. This dialogue is real winner. All right. It's you. Whoa. Oh, Whoa. You. <laughs> oh, you just hit enter. I just oh, hit no. enter. Oh, so the AI has continued to write one more. Let's just say it's someone I met. Okay. Okay. I'm waiting. <laughs> is it someone on you met on the love ship? I give up. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, that's you. Yeah. I give up. Is it someone you met on the love ship? Okay, I'll stop you there. It is someone that I met on the love ship. It's you. <laughs> there it is. Good. It's Tying you. it all together. Do a little sip the haze to rearrange stuff. You see, all right. I'm not supposed to be on this ship. <gasps> I won the tickets in a happy card game with a guy who said he was supposed to be on the space titanic tonight anyway here i am a stowaway and i was supposed to blow this ship up <laughs> god really tying it all together <laughs> wait, so, all right, so hold on says... wait, wait, yeah cycling back real quick you won the, the tickets in a card game and then uh stowed away with the intention game. of blowing the ship up oh yes because it was a part of my even... plot you didn't know you were going to be here. Were you actively seeking tickets oh. at various card right. games? How, wait, 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 wait. How about this? Okay. <laughs> she met us, which made her not want to go through with her yeah. plot to it's blow up the exactly. ship. Exactly. Yeah. But that happened a year from now. <gasps> oh, oh, God. Yeah. And then she time traveled back to now. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's All right. Good. That's good. I like that. <laughs> okay, cool. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's on board until we get the two thumbs up from Gary. Oh, yeah. No, that's good. Time travel. <laughs> that's the easiest story beat. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm hoping there's a scene where Julia meets Julia and, and Jerry has to talk to herself for a half an hour. Oh, man. <laughs> so <laughs> sad. So, so sad. Speaking of which, Country Buns in the chat here says, Next week, AI Dungeon is gone. Get ready for the new show, Jerry Dungeon. Oh, <laughs> 
I'm I don't know what that note. is, but it involves a lot of tech trouble. I'm just going to give you the heads up. <laughs> we'll be starting at 5 p.m. every day for a <laughs> 9 o'clock yeah. show. Well, it'll be a year from now, and then you time travel <laughs> back, and then it's very confusing. King of Autumn says, AI Dungeon Crawlers presents the Time Traveling Terrorist. I, I don't know if YouTube is going to be okay with that as a title. <laughs> <laughs> The time traveling troublemaker. There it is. Ah, there we go. <laughs> but it's a wink and a nod, and she's got like C4 planted all over the ship. Oh, God. So, in terms of being a spiritual successor to the beloved 1970s classic sitcom Love Boat, how are we doing? <laughs> well, first of all, it, it's a drama. It's not really a sitcom. Yeah, fair enough. Are, I are mean, you sure? So let's. No, oh, they'd have a couple jokes, but really, it was it was it was hour long. First of all, oh, it was a half hour. It was an hour long. Oh man! And they had oh, like there was light. There were comic moments, but almost all of the main stories were like a widower played by Robert Wagner who thought he'd never love again until he meets the girl in the wheelchair who thought she'd never skate again, and they perform in a show that Julie the cruise director put up and they fall in love and they leave everyone leaves the ship with a new partner wow so it's yeah. like a, a rom drum, if you will yeah it's a rom -drum. yeah oh okay was there not a laugh track no i don't think so oh i think you if looked there up was, the wrong it would show. only be when like gopher gopher and the bartender uh, i don't think so though i think they mostly tried to they tried to pull on heartstrings more than yeah. go for laughs they'd have a few light moments like you said but yeah I watched some clips today, and there was a laugh track. Really? Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Well, I could be wrong there. Maybe they had a, a maybe they time. had a an episode with a, a sort of magical realism device of a laugh track. <laughs> King of Autumn has uh, redeemed another character. This is Kepler, the four-armed bartender with a silver tongue. Kepler, the four-armed. Pop him in the world and see what the AI has to and say. And now, because we have some text as well. Oh gosh. Happened. Okay. Do oh, it quickly, Jack. Uh, it yeah. just gave me. Uh, Kepler is a four-armed bartender with a silver tongue and is skilled in magic. <laughs> he's a magician, like an illusionist. Yeah. Is that? Um, is, he's also already been drawn by Noah. Yeah. Oh, way, there way, is. <laughs> way to take way to take influence from the art. Give him some. Uh, give him some playing about. cards. Maybe you know, you know dealing out some fun tricks. Yeah. <laughs> All right. In the meantime, uh, it is it someone you met on the love ship. I give up. Oh, God, how many times did this So happen? we say, oh, um, Julia says, fine, it's you. Fine, okay. it's you. I met you, and my life changed. I was sent to blow up this ship, but I couldn't. Not after what we found together. In a year, we will meet, and I will kill you in a terrible plot to blow up this ship. <laughs> so I came back in time to see you again and stop the future that hasn't happened. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, really. You have no idea what you've ruined for me. God. Well, I I guess we have a lot to talk about. If you want to talk, we can meet in a few hours. <laughs> no. I have things to do. I, I'll call you in a few hours. I don't know if I'd let this woman walk away right now. Yeah. I, I suspect that there are authorities on the ship that are looking for her. Ah, time right? cops. So, yeah. So then he's got to decide if he's going to be true to his uh, oath that they take when they become employees of a uh, crew of the love ship or if he's going to turn her over because... She is a terrorist. I love that. So I don't know if there's then it's like he has to hide her somewhere or Right. So things I think she has to do. She's gotta do something to stir his future memory. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> his future memory? You heard me. Because a part of him that that exists in her continuum as well so a simple kiss is going to make him realize that even though she sounds crazy that the love is true wow Ooh, love transcends good. space and time oh, oh like wait that. there's Speaking a which, secret love there's a secret love in this picture huh where could it be it's it's behind the fountain though it's a giant yeah, yeah, <laughs> well done oh look at this wine falling in my mouth oh, <laughs> how did that get there wow 
<laughs> All right, let's finish off this uh, this dialogue here. This uh, goodbye. Wait, were we before that? I guess we. Oh, uh, that was about it. Is about no, it. Yeah, that's I'll, it. Yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye. Tell Julia you will call her later, and walk away. You once again <laughs> head for the bar. One of many aboard the ship. You run into Fiorina on the way. She gives you a, another adapter sticker and says, So, how was it? <laughs> it was great. I just got told in a year I will die. Uh, sh no, I didn't mean to write that. Human error. Uh, great. I was told a year I would die and then die. <laughs> Which <laughs> explosion. Sorry, I was talking while writing, and that's not a good thing to do. I meant to say, I, I was told in a year I will fall in love. All right. This oh, that's is what I that's meant really to say. important. Yeah. I was told in a year I will fall in love and then die in a huge explosion. Oh wow, that's harsh. So what did she look like? <laughs> oh, she was really pretty. She looked like Julia Roberts. Who is Julia Roberts? Oh, no one. Just an actress. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What happened? <laughs> what happened? Oh, I told her I, uh, I have a lot to talk about, so uh, we'll meet again later. Well, I hope it works out. Oh, by the way, I have a date. You do? That's great. Who with? Just a friend. All right, great. This conversation is meaningless to me. Please leave me alone. <laughs> Nobody, just like many of the talks on the love boat. Nobody answers any questions on this. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone just sort of posits statements, well, dances around everything. Says it's a long story, and that's about it. We just have a friend. An... It's Gorflax Morblue, the Howler <laughs> Monkey. Wow. I, I think I'm Julia gonna... Roberts. It's just referenced to this movie to help sell it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with a, references it, to Julia Roberts. Yeah, it's, it's in the trailer. It's 100% in the trailer. <laughs> she has a cameo. Who is Julia Roberts? Cut. Uh, hilarious. <laughs> um, sorry. Yeah, Eric is about to say we have a, a backstory corner. And I think I'd pitch this to award-winning writer Gary Pearson. Oh, okay. What are the broader goals of Julia's troublemaker organization? Uh, to stop uh, space travel, because the further uh, humans go into the galaxy, the more they ruin. Whoa, that's pretty metal, actually. That's pretty <laughs> heavy for this show about oh, love oh, okay. on a yacht. No, uh, I'm into it. Let's keep it. Uh, okay, humans are spreading peanut butter throughout the galaxy, and many species are allergic to it. All right, so you had a swing and a hit, and you have immediately <laughs> followed up with a hard miss. <laughs> <laughs> You said softer. There you go. No, it's good. I like. It. I didn't say softer. I said it oh. was a hard ball, but I oh, will okay. go with it. <laughs> um, I have a question for you, Jerry. Um, and and that is, what's an adapter sticker? Why does Fiorina keep giving them to us? Well, because there are creatures from different galaxies traveling on this boat, we have a few that are not humanoid. They, they need adapter stickers so that if they want to make love, their parts can connect. Oh, <laughs> so she's just like handing them put, out to everybody. She's handing them out so that love is compatible for everyone, no matter your parts. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. We've, we been, have two now. Yeah, I've been to parties like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's I, 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 I kind of want to know what they look like, but I also don't. I'm not sure. I'm I'm a bit torn. Noah, uh, if you were to design an adapter sticker real quick. If I were to, too, I don't know if YouTube would be happy with that. Oh, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> just give me a blurred mass. Yeah, just because anytime we've got adapter stickers showing up, I'll just I'll just have this. I'll just do a black box. Ah, <laughs> uh, there that. they are. With yeah. a heart on it, of course. Yes, of yes. course. Yes. I think they probably have some kind of a a button or something on the patch that you know you could program in what you want to adapt to, right? Right. You'd have to say, I want to make it with a Rigelian or a Vulcan or whatever. Or does it just like detect it? It's a sticker. It can't be like an right. advanced piece of tech. Um, well, you can put a lot of tech in a sticker. I don't know. <laughs> can you? In in the in the three, what, what year are we in? Uh, it's 3, like the 20, yeah, fifth century or whatever. Yeah, That's fair. they've got that figured out. They, they've got sticker tech figured out. <laughs> yeah. 
You look around the promenade and see hundreds of people milling around their lives, <laughs> unaware they will all be dead in a year. Oh. oh, hold on. All except the time police sitting at the space gelato bar. They must be here to arrest Julia. You once again go to the love bar <laughs> and find Julia working behind the bar. Whoa. This, this show has one set. It really does. <laughs> it's the <Yeah>. bottle episode. <laughs> oh, man. That's we, the season opener? We, we wow. blew the budget on the intro that had the ship and, like, in, this, in space and all that. We blew the budget all there, and then we had this set. We were like, okay. Recouping costs. I, we got it. I think just... they tried to make the adapter stickers really work. Oh yeah. <laughs> they went to the Henson company and they were like, Can you give me puppets that have adaptive genitalia, please? They're like, that'll cost you three and a half million dollars. You go to the love bar and find Julia working behind the bar. You sit down, order a drink, and tell her about meeting her. So what's the deal? Or oh, is that you? I think it's me. I say, so what's, you, the, what's the deal? Why are you so upset? I, 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 okay, I give up. Tell me. I can't. You're just a stranger. You have to promise not to tell anyone. Let's say, um... Oh, there's more text. You have is to there? promise not oh, to there's... tell anyone. I promise. It didn't show it for me. Damn it. Oh, I promise. Is. Now tell me. I can't tell you. God damn it. You wouldn't understand. Try me. <laughs> All right, Jerry, what does she blurt out? Oh. I'm pregnant with your child. Oh, God. <laughs> Every time we bump into Julia, she drops another bomb. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Oh, here we go. Um, I've got another character redemption from Country Buns. We'll look at this one in a minute. For uh, Time Detective Jonas Kimbolas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Julia says... I am pregnant with your future child. Okay. <laughs> okay. But are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you looked really healthy. I'm positive. I'm four months pregnant. Oh, no. Wow. That's, <laughs> that's, that's great. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, so oh God. Well, well, have fun with this one, Eric. I have to tell my lover, the love of my life. <laughs> He's the father of my child. He's in the love box. Go and find him. I don't know what I'm saying. I we gotta think go that's back. Her talking. Yeah, it must be. Uh, uh, well, I. Sorry. Go ahead. Because there's there's two Julias now, right? Yeah. Is well, I guess, but only one of them's was, on the oh, ship. Man. Oh man. So we I have thought, another Julia who went back in time to yeah. work on the ship. Yeah, as she's a bartender. working there. Yeah. We have infinite, about, infinite Julias that have been, that are working on out of the all ship. The entire new... ship is just a series of Julias right. in disguise. We've got a cogent story, I think, up to so what now? Can we sip to Haze for yeah, uh, so absolutely. what now? Let's go back a bit. So we're going to end on um, congratulations, thank you, so what now? So here we are. We're sitting at a bar with our f the future love of our life, who we've learned is pregnant with our future child. We've just met her today. Um, she's four months pregnant. Uh, we don't know what, 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 what to do, but what we do know, and we haven't told her yet, um, as we sit in this point of indecision, that there are time police that might be looking for her right now. Yeah, and I think four months for her species is that she's about ready to deliver. <laughs> Um, Make it urgent. Yeah. That's a that's a that's a um a, a strong climax <laughs> to this <laughs> story. Gary. <laughs> Gary, Gary, you've done something I don't think I've ever seen in the show. You've you've thrown Eric enough of a curveball that he doesn't know what to do. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna put a pin. I'm gonna put a pin in that one, Gary. I think that's a great oh. offer. I don't know if now is the time. I feel like we have several things we're juggling with. Um. 
let's resol- resolve one before we go into labor. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> could we just... Words to live by. Yeah. Could could we tell Julia that um, you have to tell Julia? Well, I think should we should we crank the the uh, the time cops? Like, yeah, they, they see there. They think they've they've spotted her. They've got to go on the run. Yeah, could you could you incorporate Country Buns' detective Jonas Kimbolis? He's a time detective. He's here to ask you a bunch of questions, and he wants them answered immediately. He is also the ghost of a detective from the 1940s. He is here to bust the time de- terrorist and wants to know what she's going to do. Um, I don't know why he looks like he's from the 1940s, but that's a, the, apparently what the AI would like. So, I think he escaped from a hologram program. Uh, oh, that's fun. Maybe it's like, um, was it Voyager that had the uh, hologram doctor? Yeah. yeah. But in this world, we have the hologram security is like a bunch of 40s detectives running around. Yeah, that's good. That's cool. <laughs> All right. We're going to we're going to tell her about it and she's going to know Jonas Kimbolis. He is. All right. You have to Julia about. Oh, sorry. Oh, to tell. Damn it. Okay, I got. I don't it. know what it is. I'm worse than usual today. It's okay. All right, there we you go. You have to tell Julia about the time police. You say, Julia, there are time police on the promenade. Do you know them? <laughs> Julia says, That is Jonas Kimbolis. He's the captain of the time police. He's just waiting to arrest me. Why? He is a <laughs> maniacal man. He thinks that I'm going to kill everyone on this ship. If I don't arrest her, he will try to arrest me. <laughs> Are you talking about arresting yourself in the, the future? Other Julia. The other, oh, my God. Julias, right? Oh, man. If I don't arrest myself from the future past, <laughs> he's going to arrest me from the past future. <laughs> Eric, you started it with the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well pointed out. So what are you going to do? Her child from the future arrives. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> and her child is five months pregnant with <laughs> Julia. Never mind. <laughs> oh, five man. Five months means she's like a month over. Oh, no. <laughs> So she's bloated and not happy about it. This is a horrible movie. <laughs> this is this is a show that got like a pilot season. Then halfway through filming the pilot, they learned that the show was canceled, so they crammed an entire season of uh, of action into one episode. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you have to arrest your past self to avoid your future arrest? Yeah, you got it. <laughs> 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 all right. Glad, all right. Glad that it is that simple. All right. Great. Moving on. I, oh God. I have no choice. I I have to arrest myself. Yes, I'm off the hook. But but I need your but help. I, oh um, no, that's you. Yeah, it must be. But I need your help. What's that? I need you to talk to my past <gasps> self. Okay. And convince her not to blow up the ship. Why? Cause I'm in love with you. I've you got your baby. All that business. We're hit. We're hitting enter. Come on, oh, AI. Oh, we're just gonna let it. Okay. Something. I the AI is just gonna be like, cause I don't want that to happen. Please. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not very definitive statements from the computer today. Yeah, I feel like our character isn't very definitive. I feel like he lets life pass him by. No, that's not a good main character. We need to... He, well, he's taking charge for the first time. The first time. That's it. Yeah, yeah, it's our first and last. All right. For me, it's just spinning. Does anyone else have text? I don't. Not yet. Um, well, that goes... I do have a backstory corner. Oh! Oh, it's starting. Up. Oh, it's starting. Here we go. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Why? <laughs> because if she doesn't, she will die in an explosion. Wow! That's great. (laughs) But how do I convince her? That's easy. You just tell her that you love her. You've never been able to do this before. I will. Okay, well, that was easy. And you promise you won't blow up the ship. If I don't arrest myself, I'll die in an explosion. Okay, but you aren't going to arrest me? I (laughs) told you. 
<laughs> I'm a maniacal man. I'm not arresting you. Has it? I want you of all people to know that. Maniacal. Christ. Could it okay. be a maniacal woman? Yeah. We could probably yeah. cycle back because it's it, if I don't. Confusion. Yeah. It, we um, could just it, change. It, 25th century, Man. it's very... Fun. I think in the future, gender doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. We're gonna... I'm just gonna change... Uh, I, I can just go in and change it to back to... Uh... Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we could just say this, and I could... Just, okay, but if she doesn't arrest you, I will. Meaning the past you, not you now, <laughs> you then, which is the now you. The then you. Yeah, all right. Um, sad you. Okay. Um... But that must mean that she's on the ship right now, right? Yeah, they're yeah, both she's on the ship. Yeah, she's the one we met earlier, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. <clears throat> um, um, that means we have to leave the love bar. Wait, where are we? We, 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 we won't leave. be gone from there for long. <laughs> <laughs> Your pursuit takes you back to the love the bar. bar. <laughs> um, While he types it out, uh, Gary, question for you. Yeah. Red Gamer Soul would like to know, love bot. How was she made? Tell me a little bit of the backstory of the love bot that uh, oversees us. Oh, the love bot. Well, I think uh, all the great love stories of all time were all loaded into one computer program and oh. added some red wine and roses. And then that became the love bot. That's it. Can I tell you what, uh, what the love of love bot stands for? <laughs> oh, it has, it has a, yeah, yeah, it's an acronym, acronym. and it stands for Linkage Overseer Virtual Entity. That's another way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> just, it's just a, a beautiful machine of, of, you know, poured in with the hearts of every romantic story ever written. Yes. Linkage. Here to make sure your linkage is well overseen. <laughs> linkage is the slang name for those adapter stickers. Oh. oh. That's brilliant. And then you the computer can linkage. help you. Yeah, it's all hooked up through Wi-Fi or whatever. <laughs> uh, all right. I do not want to know what happens when that Wi-Fi goes down. Uh, we got some more dialogue here. All right. Um, we could say, so in a flustered attempt to try and make sense of this, I think we leave Julia by saying, okay, but if she doesn't arrest you, I will. You leave Julia to go find her past self. You run past or you run into her past self on the promenade. <laughs> you tell her she has to arrest herself. She says. So this is past Julia saying. Why? Because if you don't, you will explode in an explosion. What? Your future is self is pregnant. If you don't arrest yourself, you will explode in an explosion. <laughs> Who told you that? Julia! <laughs> you! <laughs> I love you! <laughs> yeah! You know what? All things considered, the AI's tracking this time, like, <laughs> arrest weird. explosion, have to tell her you love her situation quite well. <laughs> is that, is this a, I think I this is I feel like this is, I guess, an act, an act break. break? God, I, fuck. I, I feel need like one. they only, uh, <laughs> the guest star detective, they only had on set for one day. I just did <laughs> 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 they got some establishing shots of it. Yeah. 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 They got some William Shatner people. for a day. <laughs> he was just standing by the bar. <laughs> it was an open bar. It's the only way they yeah. could get him to come by. <laughs> Anytime that you see the detective otherwise, it's just like, oh, well, you see him from behind. It's a body yeah. <laughs> A blurred shot. <laughs> you you see just like vaguely a trench coat. You're like, eh, I think that might be him. All right. <laughs> Stock footage. Maybe maybe something lies in figuring out why does why does our detective why do the time police want to stop her so badly? Who is this baby? What will the baby do in the world? Almost like the Terminator John. Yeah. Like what is cool. why are the time police after her? What's gonna happen? Because it's clear she doesn't want to blow up the ship anymore, or or she did, but then went back in time to stop it, and now her current self. Her past self, who's here and was looking sad at the bar, that's her past self, right? Or was that future <laughs> Julia? She's probably been back here a few times. She just oh, didn't man. want to complicate it too much. Oh, well, She's good for her. She traveled back I guess. like 10 times and <laughs> failed each time. 
Oh. Are there 10 this. Julias on board then? There, there are up to 10 Julias. We only need to meet two of them. <laughs> Just be aware. There's a, sign, a disclaimer at the, start of the, at the start of the episode. Be aware. There are up to... <laughs> <laughs> it's like an opening monologue and all it does is just prep prep you for the Julia bits. Do you guys want to take a quick like brain break from the story and play a little sort of intermission game that uh, Noah and I have prepared for you? Oh, sure. So, Noah, if you wouldn't mind bringing up the uh, All right, the first I will return image to this here. image at some point. Yes. Um, but what we do have is Oh, where is it? Where is it? Oh, oh Uh-oh. there it is. Seamless production value. Ah. All right. Everybody, All right. Eric, Jerry, Gary, the three of you together are going to be giving a PowerPoint presentation oh. uh, about this last corporate year here on the love ship. Um, none of you have seen these slides before, nor do you know what they contain, but I would like you to, to the best of your ability, give this presentation to us. Um, the first three slides have names in the top right corner to say whose slide is responsible. And then about halfway through, once we get to number crunching, the three of you are able to collaborate and, and shift off from one another. You guys ready to, to dive in? That was just words to me, Jack. Cool. Give understand. a PowerPoint presentation, Eric. <laughs> All right. All right. It Let's starts go. with you. So go ahead. And I will what bring you about to... this past year? You'll see. Aha. This year aboard the love ship. Oh, We've uh, we've achieved bridled, unparalleled synergy between record numbers of happy love ship customers. They found real connections, emotional and otherwise. Because what is a bagel without its delicious hole? <laughs> oh. Can we go? The next? <laughs> there we go. Right next there. slide <laughs> is Jerry. <laughs> Okay, uh, next we're gonna talk about the challenges we face on the love ship. You know what? I want you to think about those adapter stickers when you look at this slide, okay? <laughs> Sometimes we, we try oh, to God. fit a salami into a banana. And I, I don't want you to get mired down in thinking about genitals so much as humans who need to fall in love. Sometimes a salami feels like it's never gonna find its salami and a banana feels like it's never gonna find its banana. What if banana and salami were meant to find each other on this ship? So when in doubt, we've got to remember the acronym COPS. And what that stands for, of course, <laughs> is come up people <laughs> to the ship. Nice. <laughs> Too many in between letters, but come up people to the ship and find your banana for your salami. Beautiful. That's fantastic. I don't know if you have time to write this all out, Noah. We're going to the next yeah, slide. It's fine. People, come up, people ship. Beautiful. Gary. Well, as we go into our next quarter, what we need is more premium subscribers. Our ships are launching every day. And what the, the universe needs is more and more lovers. That's why everything on our ship is completely portable. And by that, I mean, you can carry it around. <laughs> That's right. You <laughs> may God. find that that sounds simple, and you'd be right. Because what we want to do is very simple. We want to always put love in the air in a place where there isn't air. And really, everyone is attainably attractive because attractiveness is in the eye of the beholder. And many of our species don't have eyes. <laughs> I guess next slide. All right, folks, let's get down to numbers. The three of you can now collaborate on each slide. You don't have to pimp each All right. other out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you know, when these cruises started back in 3021. Uh, 3020, dear. 3020. Yeah. Well, that first year really was just paperwork, wasn't it? We don't really oh. count that. We said oh, oh, we had a shakedown, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when we started, we were we were zero profitability. In fact, we were five thousand in the hole because the three of us just took a vacation in our sunglasses. Hence those emoji. <laughs> but, Remember, but we, we took some corporate money and went on vacay. That was good times. That, that was good times. But I think that really turned around when we started really focusing on merchandising, particularly oh. the merchandising of hats. And at thirty-seven dollars oh, a hat, 
Yes. It, we really oh, turned around that and bottom that line you, pretty quick. And that was you, Eric. Thank, Thank you, you for that initiative. I wasn't going to say. But. Oh, gosh. The line dancing that started with those hats and the Shania tribute band. It was a big, big hit. Yeah, but then, then we the, realized. Next, the next year, we found that no one wanted the hats anymore. Oh. And we had to adapt to a hatless voyage. And that's why everyone felt sort of blank, like we didn't know which way to go. We just so didn't know. We didn't and then know. that gave way to an intense depression and almost a hopeless sense <laughs> for this corporation to keep going. But then we came up with the adapter patch. And yes. we realized that we didn't need to rely on gimmicks like hats and line dancers. We could just provide people with the hope of love. Oh, and we had some we... fun testing those patches, didn't we? Oh, wasn't that fun? <laughs> 1,364,648 tests, to be exact. Oh, that's <laughs> right. And remember that guy, Jackson, from accounting, remember that guy, Jackson, from accounting, who thought we couldn't fit in a sticker? And then we were like, we'll show we'll you. We'll show you how you could fit in a sticker. <laughs> uh, I really miss that guy. I miss him, too. Uh, it turned out the early stickers were highly addictive. And he, uh, <laughs> oh, no. And deadly. I think he's on 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 Triton now somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. But now what we realize is the desperate human and I would say intergalactic need for love, mm -hmm. for companion, means we've got these suckers by their heart balls. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to be we filling our ships for eons. Mm -hmm. What well, this is why we ask. What about Paul? Paul is our generic humanoid that we designed <laughs> yeah. as our. Uh, target audience. Mm -hmm. Paul is 24 years old, has never had any relationship of any kind. He is a virgin and he's very depressed. But <laughs> through our research, we found that <laughs> Paul does have old money and that's who we've been targeting. And Young that's people. why we talked about hope yes. because we are not selling him love as much as we are selling him the hope of yes. love. Although he doesn't look like he's enjoying it much so far. Well, enjoyment's in the eye of the beholder. That's true. Into the final slide. Uh, that's always the challenge, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, how, how can indeed. we be better? How the indeed. dead zone. Yeah. That's, that's where you don't want to be. But also, I would say this. It's really important that we not impact with anything in space. <laughs> Crucial. I yeah. mean, uh, if you look at these graphs from, uh, you know, the white line representing, of course, uh, our initial financial projections, uh, you can see that big dip happen down when no one liked the hats anymore. And then you see this red line behind us. And what red is all about is if we just keep selling these idiots the false hope that everyone has got a soulmate, then we're going to keep bringing them back. And sure, they'll be lows, but they're always going to be highs. And our corporation takes their money. Dead. Thanks, guys. Wow, a beautiful presentation. I really appreciate you jumping in there. Well prepared. I feel like I really understand what the last year was like. I, I celebrate to you. <laughs> to the next year. Oh, Everybody gosh. feel refreshed. Yeah, I'm taking a drink too. <laughs> That's fair. Everyone needs a drink to forget that. Uh -oh. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, 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 come on. All right. We have fun here. It was great, Jack. Thank you Thanks, for that guys. game. That was fun. Yeah, it was fun. All right. I think we should reinstate the character Jonas Kimbolas. Okay. Ah, Gary, absolutely. would you like to, would you like to play Jonas Kimbolas? I will try. So I'm setting you the scene. We've just told Julia we love her, but before we can fully explain this, Jonas Kimbolas sees her. He gets up. What does he say as he strides across, strides across the promenade? Finally, you and I are going to have a talk. There's someone here that's running out of time, and it's not me. He was working on that all afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> this is is it still played by William Shatner, or is uh, that no, just for the B footage? I, I just, no, that was... Yeah. No, they couldn't afford him. Who did we hire instead? Oh, let's see. Who would be a good detective? Like a love boat detective. 
like Patsy from Happy. Well, probably, yeah, that would be good. <laughs> or, um, <laughs> not, not even the actor, the character Patsy. <laughs> the character Patsy. <laughs> Who would it be, Gary? Who do you picture? Well, what was uh, Columbo? He would be on there. Oh, Peter Falk. Peter Falk. Mm. Uh, Is this something about we, this? Like, in the seventies, is that this was filmed as well? Is that what we're saying? Well, with time travel, could be anything. Like, uh, Love Boat's popular. Star Wars came out a bit ago. Everyone's going. We gotta have something in space. Let's do Love Boat yeah. right away, as fast yeah, as possible. That, that's sure. All right, cool. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Jumping in there, really appreciate that. Um, you see Julia's eyes widen in shock. Detective Jonas Kimbolis gets up from his bench dropping his gelato. He strides across the promenade and says, Finally, you and I are gonna have a talk. Someone here is running out of time and it's not me. Kimbolas grabs your past self by the arm and drags her away. You tell Julia, It's all over. <laughs> Got her? I think, no, you, you from the AI usually means the main character. Oh, okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. It's, Right. It's all over. He's got her. And Fiorina comes up from behind, <laughs> eating a gelato, and says, Ew. Jonas Kimbolis, the time police captain. He's dragging her past self away. Let's dropkick him. I don't know. What do Whoa. we do? All right. Um, well, we're in on. space. Yeah. So change this. why don't we have something spacey happen? Like, uh, you know, uh, uh, the... Something they, big they we don't a, have the budget a, for. They hit a meteor or something, and a hole is blown in the, into the... Oh, uh, yeah. Let's really lean into the Titanic parallel. Oh, is yeah. it, it... Okay. Is that something, part, is that is that related to, to Julia, Gary? Oh, um, who knows? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, she, you know, Ideally, it is. No, her we like people, to keep it... We, we keep it uh, ambiguous. <laughs> yeah, but her people, her people, like the organization she's working for, might be trying to oh, get her finish going. Finish what she started or whatever, yeah. Yeah, finish what she started, exactly. Cool. Uh, what, what, is, uh, what is her organization's name? Oh, man. Well, it's an acronym. Do we want to do we want to <laughs> ask the chat for an acronym? Sure. <laughs> All right. It, it, Chat, should be, it should be something. Acronym. What if it was hate? H A T E. Oh, classic. But what does it stand for? Well, that's up to somebody who's clever. Ah, okay. <laughs> Chat. What is what is the organization hate stand for? Red Gamer Soul says H. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Something against. Uh, temporal. Uh, they want though. They're they're going back in time and screwing stuff up. Um, no, they they were against space travel, right? Essentially. Oh yeah, yeah. Traversing eternity. <laughs> Something against traversing. Uh... Heroes against heroes. <laughs> they see themselves as heroes. Yeah, of course. Heroes against uh, traversing. Uh, what's eternity? Here? I think oh, I mean, King of Autumn comes in with the Hyperion Agency of Time Traveling Experimentation. Oh, dang. Damn. Wow. Coming in strong. So these are actual time travel scientists. I do, though, specifically, they are against the space travel. That was the big one. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, <laughs> Mark Seib, my father from YouTube says, heavy army terrorist evictors. <laughs> <laughs> just laying it all out on the table we got patches made <laughs> i like the idea of of all that heavy army terrorists it's just like oh man some heavy terrorists evictors yeah, get out of my space just, house a little serve you with a notice and if yeah, you don't comply they just take you to court and yeah take eons. i've come up to my lair it's just like oh this is our hideout this is where we try and hide like keep things going and we just look and there's just a sticker on the door that just says please leave <laughs> you're passing firmly through on your terror worded end. sticker oh. firmly worded firmly worded Co country yeah. bun says happy angry terrible evil <laughs> <laughs> they're from the future they're not bright they don't have the best acronyms in the future <laughs> i liked the heroes against traveling something i don't know what the e is traveling, but space traveling uh something. traveling traveling 
Yarns. Everywhere? Traveling, traveling everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> They're against traveling anywhere. <laughs> everywhere. 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 They're everywhere. okay with somewheres. They're just not happy with everywhere. Yeah, Got see, you. Humans are expanding across the galaxy and they yeah. don't want them. They don't want that. that. Yeah. We're, we destroy everything. That's cool. And so they go to every when to stop them. Yeah. Ah, I uh, like that. There it is. Thank you. Thank you very much. I changed. They're all in on branding and marketing. Yeah. <laughs> they put a lot they of money a into killer it. Killer marketing and R and D team. Yeah. Suddenly, oh, I'll wait till it stops scrolling. Suddenly, the ship lurches, and you see a giant meteor smash into the star dome ceiling. It is branded with the terrorist organization Hate, the same organization that will employ Julia in the future. You use the commotion to grab Julia from the past's hand and take her from <laughs> Jonas's grasp. You rush Julia from the past to the lifeboats. You grab two life preservers <laughs> and down the ladder. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, space life preservers, all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. They give you a, a pr protective bubble of air that you can breathe. Yeah. You carry Julia to safety. The love ship is completely destroyed. <gasps> oh, you and Julia survive the blast. You both make your way back to the lifeboats. You climb aboard into the life pods. Julia says. Julia? Julia. Where is she? I don't know where she is. Julia. Ju Julia. She's talking, but we can't Oh, no, her. not again. What are we going to do now? Oh, there, there you are. There <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do now? Oh, I think this is where the babies can see. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> this timeline makes no sense. Well, well wait, this is the Julia in the past. Yeah. So, oh, right. So this would be when the babies conceived, right? N now? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's it's back like... when I was dating. Uh -huh. <laughs> you got into a. You got into a uh, lifeboat together. <laughs> that was pretty Only well a done thing. deal. And every other living organism uh, for billions of miles has just been blown up and killed. You're kind of one another's only choice. Yeah. And stress can make you amorous. <laughs> For sure. This, this is actually how the love uh, the love ship likes to work. Is that they put themselves specifically <laughs> they in the manufacture course. Yeah, dangerous they put, situations. Well, that could be the reveal. This is just the hologram. That could be the reveal that they they planned all this oh. for Julia but, to find love. Yeah. We also know, at least from our point of view, though, we we thought the ship wasn't supposed to be destroyed for another year, right? Yeah. Because well, I, I don't know that the ship has been destroyed except a hole's been blown in. Does that well, mean didn't the hole? Oh, it says completely destroyed. Oh, was it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. The word completely was tossed around. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think we need a third Julia to explain what happened. <laughs> <laughs> An older, wiser Julia. Maybe uh, the uh, love uh, ship from the future has to come back to stop oh the love ship. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I Another think maybe a, a highly future. evolved Julia from a thousand years in the future. Whoa. <laughs> Robo Julia. Uh, I wrote maybe, something. Maybe Julia from a thousand years in the future is Lovebot orchestrating this whole event. Her, <laughs> up, her consciousness was uploaded to the machine. All right. You say. I don't know. Future is unclear. The ship wasn't supposed to be destroyed for another year. Julia says. Those terrorists will kill us. You mean you, Julia. That You, you will kill us. <laughs> you say. We could go back to Earth. Maybe we could find some place to live. And then Julia continues to say to her own <laughs> yeah, idea. Yeah, we could. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what if it? my parents aren't there? All right, unrelated to that, the main character goes on to say... <laughs> <laughs> what if they are? Julia says. Then where will we live? <laughs> All right, guys. Julia was hit by a fragment of meteor. <laughs> <laughs> She's lost and confused. This is the first concern I've seen about anybody's parents. But wait a second. In time travel, there's always the thing that if you go somewhere and you, you kill your, if your parents aren't there, then you were never born. It feels like there's something to right. mind here. Yeah. Oh, okay. I see. We could go to Earth, but what if my parents aren't there? Yeah. 
Right. So the Back to the Future dilemma. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this. <laughs> I do like the idea. We've completely destroyed the ship. It's we're the writers' room. We've yes. just like all right. We've just we've completely a, we've destroyed made the, the ship. Decision. Yeah. What do we? What do we do now? And back to the future should... is playing on the TV, and we're like, hmm. a, a piece of the ship, the love bar. <laughs> the only surviving. The only <laughs> <laughs> Adrift in space, the bar- four armed bartender is still there. <laughs> okay, look, we, we, Eric, what, what, what do you, what's your brain at right now? What are well, you thinking? All right, we we have to keep in t- we have to keep in mind where we are in the episode, which is not the beginning. So, having a giant set change to Earth is probably a little bit. Probably opening the bad too idea. many doors, doors that we can't close. Um, yeah. Also, the titular love ship of the series has been destroyed, <laughs> and we need to find a way to continue the series. <laughs> right. they, um, does she have a Does she have a, a device that can send them back time to stop what just happened? Ooh, mm-hmm. we're in a life pod. Can we send the life pod back in time and redirect the meteor? If it yeah. goes fast enough, we can. <gasps> What do you say, Eric? All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is, That's the is, spirit. Can we link? Can we? Can we link the time travel to Julia's species? Sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, because it, she yeah. looks like a human and has a human name, but <laughs> Look, isn't. J- Jerry, you're 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 playing Julia. W- what about Julia? Are we about to notice that is going to be like, oh my God, you're not a human, or at least one from <laughs> Earth. You're a time traveler. You're a time traveling group from Centauri Six or something. I think what? the explosion uh, ripped off her adaptive sticker. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, revealing, that's so cool. <laughs> revealing <laughs> a, a large, long green tentacle holding an amulet of time travel powder. <laughs> <laughs> She's just the tentacle. She's a single undulating mass. A tentacle holding time travel powder emerges from where her adapter sticker was. She's still got the Julia parts. Oh, but the she still gone. is. She is still a human. So her species um, is human, but with one large tentacle one from the forehead. One very large tentacle. And where she, is? Oh, go ahead. It, where, where, what, like, where in the anatomy is her? giant tentacle well i think someone should have talked to you about this when you were younger jackson it's where she puts her adapter sticker and it's I, yes you're right, right that's my fault both middle. of my parents are here tonight so oh, I'm hello. Hi, you lovely you've done a beautiful job um, <laughs> adaptive stickers on the most erotic part of her species body which is of course her throat oh yes oh. yes just it's a, also so, the most erotic part of our species, I would say. But go on. <laughs> Said okay. the guy who thought the lead character should have very large round breasts. <laughs> <laughs> Was that? Were we on? The Was that? Are we on the same that? page? At the same yeah. Gary, or is that Gary from the future? <laughs> Gary from the future has come back to try to rewrite things. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So, so a human being with an enormous tentacle protruding from her from her neck. Yeah. And the tentacle is grasping the tentacle a time travel. So time travel amulet, amulet. potion, and powder. she alone powder. has a powder in an amulet. Yes. Okay. Yes. It's you get them at Shoppers Drug Mart. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call that? The amulet. Yes. It's her. Um, it's her. Uh, it's a Ziploc. Yeah. <laughs> Jerry just Fast thing, it. That's that all that second city training coming into work. Yeah. She no. just picked a piece of furniture from IKEA. <laughs> that's right. No, they, they call them Ziplocs on their planet because everyone's got them in their kitchens. They keep time travel powder in every corner of the house in a Ziploc in case they need to undo mistakes. Right, and no food ever goes bad because you can always just send it forward in time to when you exactly. need it. Exactly. Or back to when it was fresher. That's kind of awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You look into Julia's eyes and see her skin flaking. You realize her adaptive sticker has begun to peel and her skin turns green and a long tentacle emerges from her throat, holding her species' most prized possession, a Ziploc, a time travel amulet. You both look at each other, shocked. 
Julia says. I had no intention of dying, but I guess it's inevitable. I guess I'll just be going back home. I go back there. Why not? Because, well, <laughs> you left. That's true. That you can't break the timeline. <laughs> you can't. You can't go back. Powder, I can. Powder it up. Use that Ziploc. Oh God. Wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> Are you suggesting that she is a human head in a tentacle and nothing else, or does she still have a body? Uh, 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 sorry, sorry, <laughs> okay. she, she she still has a body. Sorry, I got very in, I got very caught up on drawing the tentacle. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Um, horrifying anatomy. To you, but to someone, she's beautiful. That's true. I'm sorry. I shouldn't be judging her like this. Well, I should put I in wish, a I wish that she could prejudices. See, I wish that she could see that in herself. She didn't have to go to the love oh. boat. I actually oh. wait. Actually, no. Never mind. What? She she actively went to the love boat to destroy uh, to the destroy love it. Boat. Yes, this she is never true. joined it with the actual intention of okay. Never okay, mind. Hold on. I rescind my statement. So, um, you can't go back. And then Julia says, "With the amulet's powder, I can." You say. But the amulet's powder doesn't travel that far. She says. If we just travel in stasis. And you say. But the stasis is short. No, I, uh, I didn't think of that. Julia says. But the stasis is short lived. If we traveled slowly. Oh, we God. Could almost reach Earth. <laughs> Stop trying to go to Earth. <laughs> I'm banning the word Earth from the AI. No, no it's fine. It's fine. It's fine, Jack. It's fine. We stop oh. in a second. Okay. I suppose okay. that we. I suppose that could work. You can carry on. It's just the two of you. <laughs> Julia, I'm in with Jerry. Right. There we go. Oh, there she is. Okay, well, but yeah, I guess we could. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, okay, but first we have to save everybody else. Yeah, you're right. You both leave the lifeboat. Um, how do you plan on saving everybody if you've left the lifeboat? Well, you have a time have travel to, amulet, Jack. Yeah, they oh, have to go gonna... back and divert the meteor. Yeah. Right? Or the whatever that thing was. Don't that... we need the lifeboat for that? Or No, 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 no. We have life okay. preservers, remember? Right. And yeah. what do those look like, Noah? Bubbles. Uh, you know uh -huh. what? That's yep. a... Eric's correct. <laughs> Can you just have them look like life preservers, like around the oh, waist, yeah, I was, with yeah, a projected so, bubble of yeah, air? Yeah, exactly. I, that, the... You're like the Air Canada life jackets, but instead of blowing, you suck the air so that you can breathe. <laughs> just little it's sips. Pre-inflated, pre-inflated with oxygen. Pre-inflated. I don't know what you do about like the crushing vacuum of space wishing to tear you apart. However, well, you know, like most science fiction, we're going to ignore some things like that. <laughs> You're right. It's the seventies. Yeah. Uh, Gary, what's your favorite science fiction property? Oh, Star Trek. Do you have a favorite series? Oh, the original series. Oh, good oh, man. Oh, nice. We, we uh, I was in a troupe called the Chumps in the early '90s. We did live versions of all the Star Trek shows with, uh, oh, well, not all, but we did like five different Star Trek shows with uh, special effects and uh, what. Uh, hilarious uh, costumes and things. Oh, How did that work? Like a, like a theater show? Yeah. So we'd have two pieces of uh, foam core and we'd have people dressed in black and when somebody walked onto the bridge, which was the stage, they'd go shh. shh. <laughs> they open the doors and we, we figured out ways of doing phasers and transporting people. Quite... And it was amazing. Gary won't say this, but they had a huge following and the show, it turned into a CB. You guys were on CBC doing that. Show. Yeah, we were on CBC radio for a while doing it. And uh, Oh my God. We, take so original, cool. we took original scripts and then improvised around them. And we basically told exactly the same stories, but exaggerated the, especially exaggerated the sexism and the uh, ridiculousness of it. But I still love this, love the show. Uh, everybody doing it, really liked the show but we were sending it up that's really cool actually yeah it was actually 
I play Captain Kirk. Oh, nice, but, okay. cool, yeah, okay, perfect. But um, it, it it was it was the first, and people forget this because we have no memory. But uh, it was the first like long form uh, uh, adaptation that was done in Toronto. So it was like the first time someone took like a television or film property and and put it on stage for laughs. That's really fun, actually. Yeah. Apparently, my oh. mom says she remembers that. <laughs> so. Oh, thanks, hey. mom. <laughs> so Queen Street West. That's awesome. What, which theater was that at? Well, it was at a little place called Big City Improv, which I was just by there the other day, and right now it's a presentation center for a new condo. Great. Oh, Love that. that. Times, they are changing. Oh, yeah. uh, speaking of changing oh. times, changing text, you both float to the wreckage of the ship in your life preservers. You find the wreckage of the ship's bridge and sprinkle the amulet powder on both of you. You both travel back in time to find yourselves on the bridge of the ship right before the meteor will hit. You tackle the helmsman as Julia wrenches the ship to starboard out of the path of the meteor. That's all I wrote, and now the AI oh, is giving the AI me is not problems. Sure about it. Oh no! Yeah, it's saying that we have technical issues, Jack. That's okay, you keep refreshing. We're, We're I'm almost doing at it. the end. Okay, hey Jerry, do you have a favorite rom-com? Oh my gosh. Or uh... I guess a love, love thing. Peggy Sue what got married, Jerry. Ah, Sue shut up. Married. No, favorite <laughs> favorite love thing is probably The Princess Bride. Oh, oh that's great true. movie. Yeah. Uh, uh, I love how heartfelt it was, and that, but how they mixed comedy into that world of pain and torture and terrorism and all of those things by such brilliantly funny characters. It was just mm -hmm. It's filled with so much I've heart and, and just like authentic love for like the genre of those like fantasy, you know, high adventure movies and, and books totally. and stuff. Very yeah, quotable. so not quite a rom com, but like when I think of love, that's the epitome. No, that's a that's a fantastic answer. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Uh -oh. All right, we can't have that. That that just. I, I'm seeing again. bad things happening again and again. What? Nothing happened, Jack. Keep talking okay. about Princess Bride. That's a great movie. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, do you I like sci-fi? I also sci love Peggy oh, Sue Got Married. Yeah. Oh. Uh, no, that's uh, Peggy Sue Got Married. I love. Uh, it's a movie with Kathleen Turner and Nicolas Cage. And if you haven't seen it. You should watch it just for the camp because it does not hold up the way I remember it. <laughs> no. it's, uh, it's basically a woman who wakes up in an unhappy marriage and wishes that she could go back and do it over again. And if she just made a different decision and not gotten married uh, to her husband out of high school, they were high school sweethearts that got married, how different her life would have been. And so I think she sustains a head, you know, bangs her head, slips and falls and wakes up in the 1950s and gets to remake all the choices again. So the concept is stellar. Um, what does not <laughs> hold up over time is a little bit of the acting from a certain Mr. Cage. But it's, Cage. it's hilarious. Oh, oh no. I really love you, Peggy Sue. I really love you, Peggy Sue. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. It's really it's horrible. like a gremlin. It was horrible. Yeah. He was supposed to be the heartthrob, and he sounded like he had a life-altering sinus infection. <laughs> oh no! Yeah. Oh Nick, no! Oh. What, what's what's everybody's favorite Nicolas Cage performance? Ooh. What's the one where he does the alphabet? Oh, oh that's um. Is that an interview with a vampire? No, no, that, that's, it's, it's not an interview with a vampire, with, but no, it's, it's the like, vampire one. Like, I, always forget I don't know name. why it's an interview with a vampire. That's very clearly not. Like, but yes, it's a vampire one. I can't remember what the name of that he one is. He does the entire alphabet, and they're in the, like, um, yeah. well, it's, it's like it's a meeting his, or something. Yeah, he improvised it, but he just says the alphabet. <laughs> it's so It's because his secretary, yeah. like, didn't didn't file something correctly. Yeah, he can't find something, and they're like, it must have been filed wrong. And he's like, how hard can it be? <laughs> there are 26 letters. Oh, no. A. <laughs> B. <laughs> C D E F G H I J K O M N O P U R S T. And it just keeps going. <laughs> you gave up at T, Eric? Keep going. <laughs> I was gonna say. You don't have half the heart, Nicholas Cage. Yeah, that's, that's, that's why I'm not. You a had star. to have his lines written on a wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what he didn't realize is it was just an eye chart that day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what a horrible eye chart that would be. My favorite is Con Air, the one where he's like, he gets <laughs> oh, out of jail and he's going home to meet his little girl for the first time because his girlfriend was pregnant. Not unlike in our movie, yeah. his girlfriend was pregnant right when he got put in the slammer, so he never got to meet his baby. 
Oh. And a whole bunch of convicts take over the airplane that's flying him home. Ah. So it turns into like a terrorist by the very worst people in the prison. Uh, and he's rocking an amazing mullet. He's supposed to be the heartthrob. Uh, and he's got like a <laughs> crazy, distracting oh, mullet where you just can't stop. I want the mullet to have its own movie to explain its existence. Yeah, that's the one where they destroyed uh, the sands. Uh, yeah. You know, in Las Vegas, was going to be torn down. And so they, they used it in the film and crashed a plane into it. Wait, actually? Yeah. yeah. That's insane. Yeah. It's, it's a really good movie. If you like that kind of like smash them up crazy, I stand by it. I like me a good and, uh, Right around that time was Leaving Las Vegas too, right? Where it was a serious drama about alcoholism. Which and, is so depressing. Yeah, it's in town. Is that Nick Cage as well? I don't actually know. Oh, yeah. that was a, that's like one of his best, but it's yeah. so depressing. What is oh. the woman's name in that? Is that Elizabeth, Elizabeth Shue. Shue. Elizabeth Shue. Oh. Yeah. yeah. They won Oscars for that, didn't they? Yeah, I think so. somebody did. Somebody, somebody won an Oscar. Did. Somebody better have. Did you guys see his most recent film where he plays himself? I have not seen that yet. But I've heard yeah. great things. Yeah, I, have, I haven't seen it. I uh, Most of the great things I've heard are Pedro Pascal, whom I adore. Oh, he's um, good. I, I haven't really heard anything about <laughs> Nicolas Cage as himself. So. I mean, I, I feel like we can all pretty well expect what Nicolas Cage playing himself is going to be like. That's fair enough. Yeah. Growing Are up, my favorite Nicolas Cage was... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I was, wait, I was waiting for Eric to give us the go-ahead. I, I was going to go right. We're good to go. The, We're good. the AI has been so good today in some ways, but it just started looping and looping. Um, oh. giving. Yeah, but I think we're good now. Jackson okay. was being charming to fill the space, and then Gary like called it out, and like, <laughs> <laughs> all the natural side. Of it, but okay. How am I supposed to host when Gary's in the room? <laughs> uh, let's see here. You, I'm gonna, gonna go from. You both float to the wreckage of the ship in your life preservers. You find. Oh, I'm gonna let go of that. You find the wreckage of the ship's bridge and sprinkle the amulet powder on both of you. You both travel back in time and find yourselves on the bridge of the ship right before the meteor will hit. You tackle the helmsman as Julia reached, um, wrenches the ship to starboard out of the path of the meteor. The bridge crew stands stunned, and the captain says, What just happened? Both of you say in perfect unison. Oh, no. Oh, no. Perfect. <laughs> the captain a, says, That was a close one. What? Hey, what are you two doing up here? You both say in perfect unison. <laughs> we, were we were just, just checking, checking the, the damage. damage. The captain says, where are you? Because it looks to me like you saved the day. <laughs> <laughs> On the love ship. That's how it ends. I don't know. <laughs> Is that the... <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're about at our time. Do we have any yeah. sort of final beats? What's our tag? Wanna... Yeah. What yeah do we, we do. Where do we go well, with you? I think, I think there should be a post credit sequence with the detective. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, what, yes. Well, what about the lady there. from the Bronx at the beginning? We lost yeah, her. Yeah, the, 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 the Flebulon woman meets Flebulon. the detective. That's what it is. Yeah. The Flebulon woman was like, I wanted her to be a lead character in this, but AI felt otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> AI somehow heard my performance. Yeah. Um, while, wait, wait, while what was the detective's the name? Uh, oh, Jonas um, Kimbolis. J -O Detective -O Jonas um, K I M, yeah. While you do this, Ooh. can I get the chat to shout out some song titles for me? And maybe one of these, the one that I like best, will be the uh, the theme song for this show. I'm gonna generate a song. Go ahead, chat. Whenever you're ready. In the meantime, sorry. Finish your thought. Um, all right, I I'll try and do this. So, well, let's have a cutaway to Jonas on the on the promenade. And maybe as the ship lurches, um, he, he meets a certain Flebulon woman. Um, oh, I'm playing both parts now. Yeah. <laughs> you can do this, Gary. I can. Uh... Mind you, this is after the credits, right? Or in the middle of the credits before we get to the special effects. <laughs> yeah, it's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so it's, not a high, it's not a high stakes thing. Half the audience has left. Half the audience is gone. <laughs> or turned the channel, if it were. Is it right? Uh, all right. All 
All right. Mean I'll read while Jack is doing that because he's out of the text. Meanwhile, on the promenade, Detective Jonas is lurched by the turning of the ship, and he spills his gelato all over himself. Then he's stunned as a middle-aged flebulon woman falls into his lap. Nice. He looks at the woman and says, Hello. She says, Hello. I'm Beth. Jonas says, Nice to meet you. I'm Jonas. Beth says, I'm uh, looking for someone. Do you know him? A Jonas husband, says, Who? <laughs> An old friend. His name is Gary. Oh. <laughs> That's a little bit inside. <laughs> a little bit inside for the viewers. But, uh, yeah. Gary, I didn't yeah, know that you were funny. a writer. I didn't know you were a writer on this show. I... <laughs> uh, we'll say Jonas is confused and the Flebulon <laughs> woman continues. Did the, did the AI really just pull Gary out of nowhere? It yeah. sure did. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, he is an award winning <laughs> writer from Canada. You ever heard of Corner Gas? <laughs> <laughs> Jonas is confused, and the Flebulon, Flebulon woman continues. He's an award-winning writer from Canada. <laughs> and scene. <laughs> and she the audience goes, with... "What? Why did I wait in the in the <laughs> theater for that?" She looks All at right, the camera wait, wait, and winks. We, with we do have two a little eyes. bit. Okay, here's some more. Jonas says, Canada? That's a bit far to travel for an old flame. Beth says, He's an old friend. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> says, okay, I'll help. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Always. No problem. All right, and that sounds like ep the next episode of Love Ship. <laughs> of Love Ship. Oh my God. Uh, what a what a crazy experience. That's so strange and wonderful. Yeah. Oh, and there's a song. Yeah. yeah. Oh, just you wait. There's a song. Okay. What's what's our title? Just give us the title, Jack. I'll give you the title. I'm doing loving you in the in between. The song, theme song from the sci-fi show Love Ship. <laughs> That's where we determined the tech, uh, the tentacle came from, wasn't it? <laughs> Anatomically speaking, correct. Yes. Okay. I'm currently only generating verse two, so you guys got a pad for time. A pad for time. Pad Thank for, God well, you're all improvisers. Is it, is it everything you dreamed, Jerry and Gary, coming That's on our show? Amazing. Are you yeah. kidding? Like I've got to say, as someone who's so brand new to this, you guys are fearless. Yeah, what an fun. no, but what an amazing thing you do that you incorporate so many elements with this crazy AI thing sort of taking you for such a wild ride, and you do it with humor and smiles on your faces. You're fearless, and I commend you. This is wonderful. I, I think we thank you, and, and when you when you when you embrace it, right? I'm sure as both of you know as writers, right? Like sometimes that hardest part is is where you're staring at the blank page, right? And you're like, what the what the hell do I go from yeah. here, right? Yeah. And I and I say today. We're gonna write a story, and it'll be about I don't know. What's I find so rewarding about writing with the AI is that it takes that inertia and just throws it out the window. <laughs> right? um, like uh, a few days ago, Jack and I were actually we were we're writing a few songs, like the one that we're doing now. We're taking them and workshopping them. We had some musicians over, and we were we were working on a few. And it's it. It's amazing to watch people come alive and just, you know, you, you end up somewhere so far away from what the AI gave you. It's, it's you know, you're not, you're not just putting down what it puts down necessarily, but it's a starting point. And um, God knows it's not going to be taking our job anytime soon, as you can see today. <laughs> no. But, you know, it's, it's a tool to use potentially. And it, I think that's really cool. I, I noticed that the AI uh, in conversations uh, spun their wheels quite a bit where they didn't want to say an answer to a question. That yeah, I think uh, that's scenes. the thing we've discovered about it because it's trained on s stories like most of a story is the middle bit <laughs> where yeah. action is moving forward, but you don't want to like end a conversation because then I don't know what I'm going to be doing with myself. So I think as a result, unless you really guide it or give it a strong uh, motivating reason to move on, the AI can can get a bit stuck. 
And and when you when you're dealing with um, learning algorithms like the AI is right, because every story it tells it learns a bit more about telling a story in syntax, right? Um, anytime you're dealing with a program like that, you're going to have steps forward and steps back in certain ways. So what we found doing this for so long is sometimes depending on the I should not gesture over here because this is way <laughs> off camera. Sometimes we, you know like we'll be moving along and then all of a sudden. Um, you know, they'll do an update to the AI, and in some ways it'll take a couple steps back, but that's only natural with how this technology works. So you're kind of always riding the wave and sailing, you know, you know, just adjusting to the wind and, and seeing what it's giving you today. And you can only kind of just say, okay, it, it is what it is. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. for, for anyone who's watching right now who improvises, there's like a classic improv game that they did at Second City and theater sports where you get the audience to write just a red piece of dialogue on a piece of paper, crinkle it up and they throw them on the stage. So then you have two actors come out, yeah. they choose the location, they choose their characters, but they have to randomly pick up these pieces and justify the dialogue that's been given to them. It's really this, you know what I mean? It really is, except the computer's giving you this stuff. And sometimes mm -hmm. you can justify it and sometimes you need to drink. <laughs> you know that's the motto i have over my front door um and yeah folks i've got a song here all generated and ready to go i've put the the uh, short code into the zoom chat you'll have to type it in again like you did before if you remember how to do so um you have to go back hit the play button hit join multiplayer and enter in the short code what oh no yeah yes we fit you with the true curveball yeah, I'll be watching this. And I have to go away. Um, and just to be clear as well, it's lowercase i, lowercase w, lowercase l. Um, that's not an uppercase i in the, in the code. Sorry, yeah. That, that's the hardest thing about this. It's very case sensitive. Noah. I see a heart in the <gasps> bottom left-hand corner. I see it too. And I see in the top left an act of love, a man tackling the helmsman away from the ship to rescue them. Yeah, it's it's uh, a. <laughs> That's the thing. This this ended in a true. This ended as all true romances should. Uh, and I see as well a, a series of levers on a control panel for this, <sighs> the love ship, making them perhaps love handles. Oh. All right. We're <laughs> slick. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys, well, I'm so sorry. I don't even know how to go. Where are we? <laughs> so, so, all right, we're going we're gonna to do it just like we did before the show. If okay. you go to the homepage of AI Dungeon, just like we did before, right? AI Dungeon, okay. I'm back yeah. with you. Okay. And then, you know, we, you click the play button in the top right corner? Uh, no, hold on. A, no, I'm on Discord. That's wrong. AI Dungeon. <laughs> yeah, oh, this yeah. Is so cute, isn't it? Okay, hold on. I've got to figure out how to get because I'm just on dialogue. How do I get back to the home screen? I um, think I'm just going to watch. No, no. If you click on the top left corner, there's an arrow. Top left corner. Oh, I think I'm in some hell now. <laughs> if you. Or, or there might be a, a, like three lines. Uh, three lines. Click on that, go to home. Home. Yes. And now go to um, the play button in the top right corner. Play. Hey. Now go to multiplayer. Multiplayer. Now in the chat of 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 uh, in the chat of Zoom. Zoom. So we're starting a new game, is what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. 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 So this is how we do the song because Jack is a special uh, uh, song song um, generator. I have to find the chat of the Zoom. How do I find the chat? <laughs> All right, I can read you that I can read it to you. Yes, Jerry. yes, the code read is it to me. Yeah. Lower co case I, lowercase W, lowercase L. Yes. Uppercase O, lowercase E, uppercase O. Yes. Zero, uppercase L. And now you all at home know that code too, so you could go sing our song with us. Oh my God, it didn't go in. <laughs> can you say it one more time? Lowercase I. I want to make sure it's okay. Yes. Lowercase w, lowercase l. Yeah. Uppercase zero. Uh, uh, sorry, uppercase o. Yeah. Lowercase e, uppercase o. Yes. Zero, like the yeah. number zero. Yeah. Uppercase l. Okay, everybody at pray to whoever you believe in. I'm going to click join. Oh, I see. 
Yeah. All right. And Jack's got the beats. Yeah, I do. Here's Love Boat. Who's who's singing what, Jack? Oh, great question. I need to turn the drums down. Please wait. Uh, This is Loving You in the In-Between. Theme song from the sci-fi show Love Ship. Eric, why don't you kick us off with verse one in the chorus? Jerry, are you cool taking us in with verse two in the chorus there? And Gary, you bring us home with the bridge in the final chorus. Oh, yeah. I'll take you home. (laughs) All right. No one ever told me how hard it could be to be all alone. I never thought I would feel this way. Never thought my heart could be so blue. How lonely I'd be in the in-between. All alone. But on the love ship, you and I could take a chance and be together all together in the in-between. Jerry. I've been waiting for what seems like forever just to be with you. And now we're standing here so close, but yet so far. But now we're standing here, but on the love ship, you and I could take a chance and be together all together in the in between Gary with the bridge sometimes it doesn't seem fair but I know someday we'll find our way together but on the love ship, <laughs> you and I could take a chance and be together, all together, all together, in between. Take a chance and be together, together. all together, in the, in, the in between. between. So beautiful. Gorgeous. Yeah, absolutely incredible. Better Voice theme song ever been written? I don't know. <laughs> I yes, don't know. Almost definitely. Mm-hmm. Well, there's nothing else to say except that you can find us at patreon.com slash imperfect librarians. You can type exclamation point discord into our chat here to join the imperfect librarians discord community. Uh, Jerry, Gary, thank you guys so much for joining oh, us. Oh, thanks on the show so this much. Evening. That was a lot of fun. Do you guys have anything you'd like to plug at this time that you haven't already? I want uh, to first, well, we want you to come see Metal Rage. Um, and there's no Julia's, so don't worry. There's like only one Jerry, really. Um, I want to know about the guy from Germany. Has he left his house yet? There's a fire. <laughs> you need Are to you get out fire? of your house. Please take care of yourself. Be Ach, safe. Tung, get out of your house. Get out. <laughs> fire is bad. Um, yeah, Middle Raged. Um, we, it's sketch comedy, and we'd be delighted. Uh, it's a great night out, and you will laugh a lot. And uh, is, is there a place on the internet that they could go and look? Middlerage.ca is one thing. Middlerage.ca. Yeah. Um, and then for places like the Oakville Center, we're on their website. If you're near Hamilton, we're on the Westdale's website. But middlerage.ca, you can see our touring schedule. Yeah, we'll be in six towns in Newfoundland uh, starting August uh, 7th or 6th, something like that. Towns in Newfoundland? Why, that's yeah. all of them. That's all incredible. Yeah. But then I think 10 towns in southern Ontario again in September. Yeah. We've got a bunch of shows coming up, so check your local listings. Uh, um, Eric's and guys, put it into the chat as well. Yeah. Oh, oh, lovely. Thank you. But honestly, thank you for having us and coaching oh, us so through this <laughs> wild ride. <laughs> You guys did a fantastic job. Oh, and in fact, I'd like to leave all of you. I feel like we've succeeded in making a spiritual successor to the hit 70s show Love Boat. So I'd like to leave you all with a quote from the great Orson Welles, who said, On my tombstone, I want written, He never did Love Boat. <laughs> Good night, everybody. 
I'm surprised. 